Hey guys, look, none of me is giving me Wi-Fi. Hi, welcome back to another Punishing Grey Raven video. My name is Lace, and today I wanted to talk about orb management. Really, just like basic orb management, which is probably going to matter the most, especially since we're in the early game. Later on, as you get more memories or as you get more busted characters, you're going to encounter more and more of those like weird mechanics where you have to spam orbs. But essentially, I kind of want to go through like the combo orb system and talk about like the optimal kind of plays. Because as you guys know, it gets really, really hectic, really, really fast. So yeah. Yeah. However, before we jump into the video, I do want to mention that I am hosting a giveaway on another video. So recently, I dropped a video in which you can actually buy rainbow cards cheaper than what you would get it through the Play Store. Depending on where you could live, you could save up to like 55%, but like just go check it out guys and enter the giveaway. The link is in the description below, but otherwise, let's just get back into it. So let's first talk a little bit about like the different mechanics that are actually in the orb system. As most of you already know, as you ping more orbs, so for example, I'm going to like ping three orbs here. Pinging three orbs pretty much like means you get a bigger effect of what that orb originally did. So for example, if I ping all three of these, I will get a big heal. And so that's pretty straightforward. However, like some characters, they actually have like some special skills or combos that are kind of like related to the three ping orbs. And so here is one right here. And what it is saying is like, I need to do any three pings. So like any three orbs and then follow it up with a red one and I'll do a big combo. So let me try to do that. Let me get a red orb up first and then let's do that. Okay guys, so as you can see, I'm about to do the three ping into the red orb and let's see what it does. So you've got the three ping and you've got the red orb. And so you got those massive, massive lasers. A whole bunch of different characters do have these kinds of combos. If you just have a look in the escape menu, you've got like Lucia who's doing the three ping into the dual blades. Lucia, Lucia, Lucia. I don't know. You guys, you guys no, stop telling me. But yeah, that's pretty much all of the basics covered with the orbs. So let's start talking about like where it all really matters. And so let me start building up orbs first because I want to talk about the decisioning. There's just like so many scenarios to actually account for, especially like when you you have like so many freaking orbs on the table. I think you can have up to eight at a time. And because you have so many, you're not really like 100% about what to do, right? And whilst we are doing this, I want you guys to see this counter down here, 14 out of 16. So one day when you're playing alpha or you're playing like one of those units that are reliant on like stacking three orbs or just stacking a whole bunch of orbs, maybe like Ice Lucia, you're going to be wanting to like boost that as much as you can. And it's counting the orbs that are kind of off screen that are ready to come in. Okay, so our orbs look like this. And so what exactly should we do, especially with the next matrix? right? In my opinion, there are two right moves here. So say we get into Matrix, it's either to tap this blue orb here, or it is to tap this yellow orb right here. And the reason why I want to choose these two is because when you enter the Matrix, your next orb ping is actually going to count as a three orb ping. And so what that means is that if I go into the Matrix and I tap this one here, it's going to be a three blue ping. Conversely, if I tap this one over here, it's going to be a three yellow ping. And so I want to show you guys like proof of that, because if I tap this one and it is indeed a three yellow ping, Nanami is going to get her QTE. And so I'm I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to dodge real quick and then I'm going to tap this one. And as you can see, Nanami is getting her QTE. And then after that, remember, we've got this combo over here. So I can press this skill over here and then I get that core laser thing. But that's just like one of the different decisions, right? And so like what I really want to say is that when you're in the matrix, you don't want to be touching these two because like these two, you can activate them outside the matrix. Essentially, if you activate a three orb combo whilst in the matrix as your next free one, you've essentially wasted the free one, right? And so that is why if you have a stack of four, for example, like this over here, what you can do if you're insistent on using the blue orbs is to tap the furthest left one, which is this one over here. And so that actually did count as a triple orb. If I tap that, it's going to be core laser again. However, what has happened is that we have actually conserved these three blue orbs. So that is actually really good because from four blue orbs, we've managed to make two, three blue pings out of it. Okay, then. So the next thing I do want to talk about actually is like, well, which orbs do you want to go in which order kind of thing? Or which ones should you use? Something like that, right? In my opinion, whenever you're in any character, you're goal is to get the QTEs off for both of your other off-field units. And so what this means is that I really want to ping yellow and red. And so I have a bunch of these blue orbs here. And so I kind of want to dump them in favor of like hopefully getting more reds or yellows. And so I'm just going to build up a little bit. See, I'm at 13 out of 16. I'm at 14. So I kind of want to dump that. And I can see that there are a whole bunch of nice stuff going on here. So looking at this combo strip right here, I do see a scenario where I am able to get both the yellow and red QTEs off. So my plan now is to dodge, get into the matrix and activate the yellow ones so that I get the triple orb special that is going to get me S Nanami's QTE. Then after that, since I've used up the special like one converts into three ping orbs upon matrix entering, what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to expend this blue one and then I'm going to have a triple red down here. And then so let's see that in practice. Let me do a quick dodge and then I'm going to do a yellow. I have Nanami. I'm going to do a blue and then I'm going to do the red one and then I've got the Lucia coming out. And so I do want to run through a couple more scenarios because I think like how you really learn about these is just seeing a lot of different combinations. And so for this one here, I think there are two like more of 
obvious choices in which you want to pick either this yellow one over here or this yellow one over here. Now, I would say that this yellow one over here is probably the best choice because it actually lets you get this three ping orb for the blues. And why that is good is because after you use this three yellow ping, you're going to get a three blue ping. And then after you use that one, you're actually going to have a three yellow ping after that. And so let's do exactly that. I'm going to expend this guy over here. I'm going to use this three blue ping. And then you can see I have a three yellow ping again. However, remember that after using QTEs, there is indeed a cooldown. So for example, if I do that and then I use Nanami and then Nanami is actually going to go gray. And so like technically speaking, I shouldn't spam those yellow orbs or like three times yellow orbs. And so there we have it. Nanami is back. And so only when she's back, should I actually use those three yellow pings. So the next thing I want to talk about is character swapping. So character swapping, like there are a lot of pros and cons, but essentially the most important thing that you do need to know about character swapping in is that when your character comes in, for example, when I click this Lucia portrait, she is going to come in doing a three ping orb of her red skill. And so what that means is that if you guys remember over here, if I do a three ping orb with her red skill, and then I follow it up with another red orb, I'm actually going to get the dual blades. So I'm going to go back into the game. And so let's do exactly that and pray that there is actually a red orb there. So I'm going to go Lucia and I'm going to ping a red orb. And so as you can see, I am in dual blades form. Okay, guys, so I'm going to show you that again, except I'm going to use live this time. And so hopefully when I switch into live, there is a red orb. If you don't get it immediately, there is about like a window of four seconds where you can attack a little bit and hope that you get it next. And so let me show you guys live. I'm going to jump into live. We have a red orb and bam, look at that spicy. Unfortunately, my S Nanami does not have that feature. And so I can't do it with her, but like you guys just need to check the characters that you do have. Okay. So I'm going to go back into my Lucia because there are actually quite a fair few things you need to think about with your attacker on the field. And so I don't know if I actually explained why you want both of them to QTE at roughly the same time, but essentially your other characters are actually going to have some like sick memories, like support memories attached to them. And so hopefully those memories actually trigger their effects on like QTEs and thus began the age of the QTE slaves. And so so that being said, I think I want to show you guys like the buffs and the debuffs that I'm actually running on them. And so if there are like support memories on them and I trigger them at the same time, it's kind of like a burst window has opened, especially because my Lucia kind of has her burst window with the dual blades as well. And so essentially what's happening when I actually get like my Nanami QTE and then my Live QTE, and then I get to like use my dual blades with my Lucia on my Nanami's QTE, I'm going to be actually doing an AOE physical defense down. And as for my B Live, when she heals me, I actually get a physical attack up and I will show you guys that very, very soon. But before that, let's like go through one more combo pattern. And so this one is pretty obvious as well. You want to hit the blue to trigger the lives QTE. And then we've got a triple orb Nanami. And then so that's going to get her one. And then because we've tripled previously, we can then tap a red orb and go into dual blades. And so let's do exactly that. Let's go dodge into the matrix. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to have both QTEs and then we're going to go into dual blades. And then so like hopefully that was a massive, massive burst. All right, guys, let's jump into the memories real quick. Okay, first of all, let's have a look at B lives memories. And so let's get into it over here. And so what I have here is a Voltaire 2 set. So attacks reduce the target's defense by 10% for 5 seconds. Now this is really interesting because whilst this does work on B live, it doesn't work on S live. And the reason that it doesn't work on S live is because like her QTE does not actually do any damage. It just does a heal and a shield. And so that is one thing that you need to think about when you're actually assigning out these memories. And so yeah, what this means is that when I use B lives QTE, she's going to drop down, she's going to do a little heal, and then she's going to do like some physical damage on like a circle around her. And when she does that physical damage, she is also going to apply a defense down buff onto them. And that, my friends, is Voltaire. And so let's move on to the next one, which is Richelieu. And so this one also works with Liv because like if she heals anyone, the target is going to get a physical damage increase of 8% for 4 seconds. And so with that being said, I'm going to hop over to the last one, which is a Catherine. And so QTE and 3 ping skills reduce the target's physical defense by 20% for 5 seconds. I hope with all of this, you guys can understand the concept of like QTE slaves or like supports at least. And especially because your supports, typically speaking, they're going to stay off field. There's not really any hurry in like actually upgrading these memories. They don't really need these stats unless like some of their abilities scale off of it. For example, Liv's heal is based on her maximum HP. So if I go over to her skill over here, as you can see, this is her QTE skill. This is realistically the only skill she needs leveled. And then over here, you can see that the heal is actually scaling off of 16.47 of her max HP. Similar kind of concept for Nanami. So if I go over to Nanami's, let's have a look at what I've got for her. So as 
you can see, I've got another Voltaire over here. It's just because I don't have anything better. I'm pretty sure two Voltaires don't stack on top of each other. So realistically, you don't want to be running this. But what this does do is like kind of guarantee my uptime for Voltaire. I could Ike over here. Like this is just like kind of a set that I've just put in because I have nothing better to run. However, lastly, we have Da Vinci. And so Da Vinci is really lit because every time a QTE is triggered, the construct on the field, aka your main DPS, hopefully, that construct is going to gain 10% attack and 20% defense for five seconds. And you can already see like when we come down here, we've got a four piece effect. When QTE is triggered, triggers another constructs QTE. Like what? And if there are already three constructs on the field, then attack is increased by another 20%. Like that is so, so massive. And whilst the five stars do sometimes have like these kinds of effects, like typically speaking, the really, really busted ones are in the six stars. And so that is why everyone is telling you to not over invest into those five star memories and just go for the six stars, especially when by like day five or day sevens, you can actually already start farming for these six star ones. But yeah, hopefully that kind of gives you an overview as to why it's so important to actually be able to like open those burst windows with those QTEs. And with all of that being said, I do hope that this video has helped you. So let's start wrapping this bad boy up. I've got a secret message for you guys, and that is QTE easy. If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means that you've actually watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you very much. But otherwise, please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow. You guys already know what it is. If you guys would like to support the channel, we do have a membership button down below as well as some affiliate links. But otherwise, as Leonardo DiCaprio once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.